Sri Lanka's energy minister says the country has no money left to pay for fuel imports. And that essentially means Sri Lankans queuing for petrol at gas stations will get nothing. The small fuel reserve the country does have will only be released for essential services like ambulances. As the economic crisis worsens, so does the political one. On Tuesday, Parliament voted against an opposition motion to condemn President Gotabia Rajapaksha for his handling of the crisis. Protesters have been calling for his resignation for months, but he continues to remain unmoved. New Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has warned the country has to face, quote, unpleasant and terrifying facts. In many ways, Sri Lankans are already facing them, but that's only increased their determination for change. It's been weeks and the people of Sri Lanka are still on the streets, praising slogans and singing songs of hope. They demand a better future and a complete political overhaul in their country. A familiar face as the new Premier has done nothing to assuage them. Ranil Vikramasinghe, a seasoned politician, has been appointed as the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. He has held the post five times previously, but never completed the full term. While some people find hope in him, many others have their own doubts. Many distrust Vikramasinghe. They see him as being close to the ruling Rajapaksa family, who they want gone from power. We don't have any faith in the, our current Prime Minister, to be honest. Like, no one has faith in him given his history and like given the fact that he is basically got a reputation for being incredibly wishy-washy and inept. They want to hide their corruption. They want to hide their corruption. That is why they have brought in Vikramasinghe as the Prime Minister. Most recently, he is remembered for shielding the Rajapaksas when he was Prime Minister in the previous government. Even as cynicism abounds about his appointment, the new Prime Minister has his task cut out for him. Needless to say, Vikramasinghe faces an uphill battle of pulling an essentially bankrupt country out of its grave crisis. He has called on all the political parties of the country to leave their political differences behind and help him rebuild the economy. That is likely a tall order. Iran Vikramaratne is a member of the main opposition party. He says his party is ready to support, but only under certain conditions. Even though we have disagreed with the appointment of the present Prime Minister because he doesn't have an independent majority in Parliament, we are still willing to work with it and we will be in opposition and we'll cooperate. But if they try to play hard politics and if they poach members from our party and go that route, then certainly we will not be cooperating with this government. But no one has come up with solutions for the crisis and the situation is likely to get worse for Sri Lankans in the coming months. Vikramasinghe has warned they would be the most difficult ones of their lives. And joining me now for more from Colombo is Dr. Paikasoti Sarvanamuttu. He's executive director of the Centre for Policy Alternatives. Dr. Sarvanamuttu, welcome. How confident are people in Sri Lanka that the new Prime Minister, Ranil Vikramasinghe, is the man to lead them out of this crisis? I think their opinion is divided. There are people who dislike Ranil Vikramasinghe, who they feel has always protected the Rajapaksas, and that he has not been a very honest leader, etc. Then there are those who sort of feel that, despite all of that, he is a technocrat at one level, and that he has good contacts internationally, and that he will get the economy back on its feet. And then there are those who agree with that and sort of say, look, he is the man of the hour. He's the only one who can succeed. But in reality, I suppose, we have a crisis of governance. There is an economic side and a political side. And you have to address both those issues in coordination with each other. Working on the economic issue, however strong it is, is not in itself going to get the protesters to go away or anything like that. I'd like to just go back to the first point that you made about people who believe that maybe he is uh, protecting the Rajapaksha family. I mean, so far, four cabinet appointments have been made. 
all of them from uh, President uh, Rajapaksha's uh, political party. I'm wondering, does that further lend substance to that view that Ranul Vikramasinghe is indeed the Rajapaksha's man? Well, I mean, he is the only member of his party in parliament. They didn't win a single seat in the last election. And what he is in parliament on is a bonus seat. So in that respect, yes, he would be seen as, uh, you know, giving the Rajpaksas a lease of life in that he did not make any conditions for taking the job on. He said that the economy is in dire straits, and that ostensibly was the reason why he was accepting the prime ministership. However, once he's come into office, he has uh, said that the 21st Amendment will be looked at, and it's been sent to the Attorney General's Department, and it will come to Cabinet. So there is some movement on the political front. But the question is, is it enough? And is it going to last for long enough to get the economy also on a sound footing? Uh, let's just talk about uh, President Gotabaya uh, Rajapaksha. I mean, he has also talked about uh, reform along with uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe. And uh, President Rajapaksha has talked about divesting himself of all of these all-encompassing powers he accumulated two years back. But nothing really has uh, happened on that front. Uh, and people are also asking for him to resign. Can you help us understand the thinking behind all of this? I mean, the whole country wants reform and for President Rajapaksha to go, but he isn't complying. Why is that? I think Gotabe Rajapaksha is not resigning, despite the public clamor for his resignation, because he's not just president on his own. He represents an entire family, a dynasty, who are accused at one level of war crimes and crimes against humanity, and at another level of having robbed left, right, and center. And so if he goes, he will lose whatever immunity he gets from prosecution. He and the rest of his family will be very vulnerable to prosecution, to being brought to account. And I think that's the principal reason why he wants to stay on in power. Uh, so the people want uh, President Gotabaya Rajapaksha to go, and let's assume that he did, would it make a difference to the situation in Sri Lanka? I mean, I only ask this because Sri Lanka, for instance, wants a bailout from the IMF, but having some sort of a stable government seems to be a prerequisite to receiving funds. Yes, under the constitution of the country, if the president resigns, the prime minister becomes president, and within 30 days, parliament should elect someone of its own, a member of parliament, to serve out the unexpired term of the president. So, I mean, the notion that there might be any sort of uncertainty and anarchy and all of that, if Gotabe Rajpaksa resigns, is entirely incorrect. There is a process that has to be followed, and it can be followed. Now, uh, a number of those joining calls for Gotabe Rajpaksa's ouster are also former supporters who voted him into power. Um, I wonder if you think there is a change that we're witnessing in Sri Lanka in terms of what people expect from their elected representatives? Well, remember, Gotabe Rajpaksa came, down, came into power in 2019, standing on a platform of strong, decisive leadership, particularly given the background of the 2019 Easter bombings, as well as the relative lack of coordination and incoherence of the previous government. However, his sort of performance in government has not been strong or decisive. I mean, he's only spoken to the country once in this two-month crisis, since the crisis came to a head. He has flipped and flopped on a number of decisions. And he's also shown that he doesn't have the capacity to govern in terms of understand right. economics, as one example. We'll have to leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Paikasoti Sarvanamuttu from the Center for Policy Alternatives. Thank you, sir. Thank you.